Hi, this is Bethany Gagné, founder of the Albany Peace Project, and today I'm here with Kim Beekman, who has studied many different types of meditation. So Kim, can you tell people um, about the types of meditation that you've studied? Sure. Yeah, there's um, a number of types of meditation, as you know, that we can do. Um, transcendental meditation allows you to focus your mind on a mantra. The mantra is like a mind protector. And so um, that allows you to kind of transcend beyond the mind and the ego and just kind of connect up with your source, with your divine source, which is beautiful. And that's been around, obviously, for many years. And um, there's other types of yoga, of uh, meditation that allows you to kind of move the prana in your body, the life force energy in your body and um, be able to clear out your system so that you can settle the mind to be able to do that merging with the, with the divine, with your divine source. Um, and what I like to practice personally, um, because I find that it's important to merge with our source and to connect with the divine and to be able to transcend the mind. But then we come back and we still have these minds. <laughs> right, right. We still have the ego. We have, right. still have this body that's screaming at us. We have, <laughs> still have anger and fear and depression and all the stuff that we all struggle with on a daily basis. And so we can go all zen and we actually do feel meditation. Even if we're, we're transcending, we do feel meditation um, kind of bleeding into the rest of our lives. Mm. So um, mm. it really creates a sense of peace and centered um, ability kind of to bridge the lower mind with the higher mind. So we're going into this vast higher consciousness and then we come back and we're in this body that's stored about 40 years of <laughs> negative emotion and we've got these gallbladder issues yeah, right, right. or, you know, we've got this thing happening with the left arm, yeah, yeah. you know? so. So that we're in human bodies and we're in this human experience and it's super messy, you know? <laughs> and if you're living and it's not messy, then right. chances are you're just burying that stuff because it doesn't make sense and we were never taught <laughs> to really how to deal with that and how to function with it. So, um, so yes, so I um, had the opportunity to study uh, a little bit more about the mind and how the mind works, and I'm going to share just a little bit about sure, that. Sure, please. So 95% of kind of where, we, where, where our thoughts and reactions come from, come from our subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is programmed between the ages of one and seven years old. And so here we are. Um, programming our minds and putting our blueprint for life together before we can even, you know, think really clearly about how the world works. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And so then 95% of our reactions are coming from that kind of pre-programmed -pre state of our subconscious. And so we find ourselves, someone says the most innocent thing, and we go into fight or flight and are really angry that they said that. How could they say that? Right? <laughs> and so... Um, the process of bringing more mindfulness and consciousness into our lives is to really begin to start um, witnessing or becoming aware of the, the subconscious and of those conditioned belief systems and thought processes. Now they come up as, you know, just thoughts or we may feel them as emotions or we can even feel it in our body. You know, yeah. something can, can sink so deeply as you know with the biofeedback. You know, it can sink so deeply into our vibration, into our bodies. So, um, it's important, in my opinion, to when we breathe, connect with ourselves, but to also feel what's going on. And that doesn't mean like manifest the negative and really sink in the negative vibrations, but actually feel, oh wow, that really brought up a lot. Wow, I really had, I had a pretty messy reaction to that, you know? And just acknowledge and witness it because I think it's in our non-acknowledgement, non-bringing it up to consciousness that it begin, that it continues to live within us. And so I may yell at my kids and feel really bad about that, but if I can't really look at, oh wow, I was really triggered by that and oh, I kind of feel bad that I yelled at my kids, but it's okay, and I forgive myself for that. Right, right. And so that kind of goes into the spiritual practice of forgiveness, and really forgiveness as a purification tool for us to shift how we vibrate and how we feel, and to help cleanse out some of those negative um, 
experiences that are kind of stuck in our subconscious. Right. And so there's different ways to use forgiveness. Um, there's more um, formal forgiveness prayers that could be used, but one that I really love is uh, was written about in the book Zero Limits by Joe Vitale, and he talks about how there was this um, there's this therapist, and he was a Hawaiian shaman, and he there was a psychiatric prison. <laughs> that there was a psychiatric prison and he was called in because there were so many issues in this pr prison and there was so much attrition and turnover and people weren't coming to work and there were all of these issues that he came in and used a shamanic, a, a, it's called Hoponopono and it's a prayer that goes, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me. Thank you. And the basis of the prayer is that we are 100% responsible for absolutely everything we attract in our lives. And that doesn't mean self-blame or self-punishment. It just means, oh wow, I've attracted this situation for a lesson. There's a lesson coming at me and now I can bring awareness and witness it as well as cleanse it with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so the way I use that is I'll, in during a meditation, will use the tool of forgiveness, like um, Pramahansa Yogananda te teaches this meditation technique to actually just whisper it until you can feel it vibrate inside of you. So oh, beautiful. You can go into meditation and just go into, I'm sorry. Right. Oh, thank you. So what Dr. Len did was he went into this prison and he looked at each of the cases of each of the criminals in the in the prison and he cleansed himself of each of those acts that they committed. And within months, um, people were getting off meds and the security at the prison shifted. And and within years, the the um, the building shut down and people were able to shift out and so that's really appropriate right for yeah absolutely. what we're looking for Albany Peace Project because if we just cleanse ourselves right. of that that pain or that that holding of the negative issue right if we can finally just cleanse ourselves we're all connected into that divine source and so we begin to shift consciousness really and yeah. consciousness in Albany and consciousness within our families Absolutely, um, absolutely. So I think it's important for people to recognize that if we're doing these meditations and these negative feelings come up, that's completely natural, right? Yeah, yeah. And you've just given us a gorgeous tool for us to kind of work with it and to let it go and how important forgiveness really is to release our spirit, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. My, my teacher Mirabai says, you know, you pull in light, we're pulling in light, and this isn't just an imaginative thing, like our intention actually is pulling in light into our bodies, into mm -hmm. into our fields. We're, we're pulling in light. Right. And when you pull no in joke. light, yeah. it's no joke, we're not yeah. just making this stuff we're up, not. we just can't see it, and so right. it seems imaginative, but our imaginations are actually our spiritual tool. Mm -hmm. And so as we pull in light, then the darkness has to come up, it's got to come up, and as it comes up, it's important that we don't attach to it and we don't make stories up, but we actually feel it in order to release it. Right. I can't tell you how many students I have that are like, after meditation, I'm biting my husband's head off. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's not ideal. <laughs> what happens is, is we're bringing in the positive. The negative does have to leave. And it's okay. We all yeah. have it. Yeah. We can't deny it. And the more we recognize it in ourselves, the more we have self-compassion and the more compassion we have for other people because we're all struggling through this messy right. life thing. Right, right. And then the more compassion we have, the less heaviness it, yeah. it feels. You yeah. Know, five years ago, if I would have yelled at my kids, there would have been like, rah, rage behind it. <laughs> and now I'm like, just stop it! And my middle daughter will look at me and just go, <laughs> Because there's no weight behind the anger. Yeah, you know, right. you loosen off the vestedness and you forgive and you release and and then life automatically becomes more joyful and yeah. more blissful because yeah. you've made room yeah. and you've lightened up. And yeah, and this light is, is so cleansing for us. And, and and know that if we're doing these light meditations and you invoke light and you feel it, very many of you will feel it. I mean it's a palpable presence, right, when you bring in light very yeah. often. And take and and Really honor that and recognize that because it's it's light is one of the building blocks of the universe. I mean, we are working with such uh, 
powerful stuff yeah. when we're doing that. Yeah. In fact, John Barnes' myofascial release, actually, in, in some of the trainings, there's a lot of practitioners around here who are really extraordinary, that the actual fascia in the body is what holds the light in oh, the body. Interesting. Yeah. So we it's actually right down, and it's right where our nervous system is as well. You know, right, our nerves right. are in the fascia. Yeah. So, so it's real, and it's in there. It's yeah. just we don't have the measurement tools yet. Yeah. And we, we often are so covered. You know, mm. most of us don't feel, and we don't want to feel, because life has just not really felt well, very yeah. nice, and we yeah. don't really know what to do with it all yeah, anyway. True. True. So as we begin to feel a little bit more, we, we become a little less judgmental about feeling, then we can start to feel the light, yeah. you know? Cause, yeah, Because a lot true. of us were really point. covered at yeah. first, and but that's okay. We just right. keep imagining it until right. we can begin to feel that's it. That's a good point, that if you don't quite feel it, it's a process of thawing a little bit, and the more yeah. you thaw, the more you're able to feel those finer vibrations and uh, it's worth the effort. Yeah. So thank you, Kim, so much. Um, I'm looking forward to your meditation. I'm sure it's going to be um, excellent. Rockin'. Yeah, rockin'. <laughs> rockin' works. <laughs> all right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Bethany. Absolutely. Thank you to thank my you. teachers. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.